this circuit is very simple. With the meter on the 50MA setting, I'm going to hit the press switch, volume warning, and the horn will sound. The voltage meter also increases to just over 10 milliamps. And this circuit is called honk your horn because you can pretend that it's a car horn. And you have to hold down the switch in order for the horn to sound. Just like pushing your steering wheel on a real car. This circuit will teach us a little bit about the clock that is included in this kit. The clock is the triangular red component and it uses a liquid crystal display or an LCD display. Liquid crystal displays use very little energy, but they cannot be viewed in the dark. A lot of clocks use this form of display, but they typically have a backlight so that you can see the time in a dark area, especially in your room when you are sleeping. And so that makes it easier to view the time, but nonetheless, the clock uses a very low amount of energy. Right now, the voltage meter is on the 0.5 MA setting, milliamp setting, and this clock is settable, and it also displays the uh, date as well as having a built-in timer. The buttons on the bottom of the clock, which need, can only be pressed using a pointed object like a pen or paper clip, are used to adjust the time and date. But doing that is very tricky. Now this clock is also for demonstration and educational purposes. And it should not be used for actually telling the time on a regular basis. But at the front on page 4 of the manual, there are instructions for how to set the clock. But I think the clock resets itself when the power is disconnected for an extended period of time, so I'm not going to do that. But you can tell that the meter does not appear to read anything because of the low voltage the clock runs on. Now we're going to learn about capacitors. A capacitor is a device that stores and holds energy for a future use. In a way, it's like a rechargeable battery, but on a much smaller scale. With this circuit, we'll have the voltage meter set to the 5 volt setting, and we will start with the slide switch in the B or left position. We're going to move the switch over to position C and watch the voltage meter. The meter shoots up to just above 2 volts, well, it resets. The capacitator has been charged. Now watch the LED as I move the slide switch back to position B. It comes on and will stay on for a short while because the capacitor is discharging the current through the LED. Now capacitors use store energy using an electric field between metal plates, similar to how, a, to how the magnetic field of a magnet works. Although they can only store very small amounts of energy, they can discharge it as well as store it up relatively quickly. And the capacitor can also be, capacitors can also be very small components. The voltage meter only measures current in one direction so, when it's in this position, it will only measure the incoming current flowing into the capacitor, but once the, it's charged, we can change the direction of the meter so that it is facing the other way. And now, when I move the switch to the B position, the meter will record the current discharging through the capacitor. Unfortunately, the meter cannot work both ways, so you have to switch it each time if you want to measure both the incoming and outgoing current. We are going to demonstrate the motor and 
We have the meter set to the 50 milliamp setting. We are going to hold down the press switch and the motor will spin. As it spins, you may notice that the current is initially high when the motor starts up, but then it decreases a bit as it reaches full speed. Let's do that again. Look at that. It's more than 30 milliamps in the beginning, but you can see that the volt, the uh, current drops. That's below 30 milliamps. That's because motors have an initial high startup current, but as the motor reaches full speed, the current will decrease, especially as that current meets that coming from the battery. And so it is reduced. Motors, like I have said before, have magnetic fields in them that cause them to turn as electric current passes through. And it will spin a certain direction according to the direction that the current is flowing. We are now going to use the water wheel on the motor instead of the fan. We'll hold down the press switch. The meter is at the same setting, 50 milliamps, and now it's reading about 35 milliamps. It doesn't spin as fast as when it has the wind fan attached. And the voltage is now lower. It's below, it looks like it's between 25 and 30 milliamps. Let's turn it on one more time. High startup current, like I said in the previous project, and then it slowly drops. We are now going to measure the voltage produced as the motor spins. I will hold down the press switch. The meter is set to the five volt setting. And as I hold the switch down, watch the meter and see what happens. In the beginning, it seemed to exceed three and a half volts, but it seemed like the current slowly dropped a little bit after that. And as in the last project, I explained that they have a high startup current, but its voltage will contradict that of the voltage from the batteries, from the battery, and so it will be lower. Now we can try replacing the fan with the water wheel. Voltage seems to be similar. Now we can try to spin the water wheel without holding down the switch and see if any voltage is produced. You will see that even though the switch is not held down, a little bit a little bit of voltage is generated when I'm spinning the motor just by using my hand. And that reinforces the principle that motors generate a small amount of electricity themselves too. We are now going to observe how much current is generated when certain components are operating in this circuit. We're going to begin with the hand crank. We have the voltage meter set on the 50 milliamp setting and we will hold down the press switch. The meter reads over 45 milliamps as the hand crank spins. Now what's interesting is that the force used to control the crank, which is generated by a gearbox within the component, is greater than that of the motor shaft. Even though it's slower, the hand crank is heavier and so more force is actually being generated and it can move heavier objects in theory. Kind of like how even though a bulldozer is not as fast as a car, it has more torque and therefore it can be used to push heavier objects. Unlike a car, which cannot. Now we can move, replace this with the hand crank with the motor 
And look, the, when the motor spins, just over 10 milliamps are generated. The motor is not as powerful as the hand crank. Now let's try the red LED. About 30 milliamps are generated when it is on. So of these three components, the hand crank is definitely the most powerful because it reads about 45 milliamps when it is on. We will now study the voltage produced when the hand crank spins. We have the meter on the 5 volt setting and we will move the slide switch to position C. I'll tilt it up so it's easier. And when the hand crank spins, just under 3 volts are produced. And then we can set the voltage meter onto the 50 milliamp setting and then spin the crank yourself. Now it seems like you can produce quite a bit of current, even though I'm doing it one-handed. It's still pretty powerful. I'm not going to do this, but you can also turn the hand crank on and then very, very carefully and using minimal force, turn it the other way and see how the voltage is affected because you could end up damaging the hand crank if you use too much force. And although the motor in the hand crank is similar as to the regular one that I've used in previous projects, a lot more voltage is generated by using the hand crank and it's more beneficial because when you are operating it completely by hand, you're not using any energy unlike when it is connected to the battery and working on its own, but you are producing it. We are now going to talk about the radio that is included in this kit. Here it is right here. And normally it would run on two AAA batteries, but there's a special device called a battery eliminator that you can insert in it so that you can hook the radio up to any of the circuits that you build in this kit. Here are the instructions on how to install it. And note that you do not put the compartment lid back on after you install it, not to mention that you can fit it on. The only way to listen to this radio is by using headphones, which are included with the kit. And in this circuit, we set the voltage meter to the 50 milliamp setting. Now the, radio, the switch, it should be set to the B position, the slide switch, and now we will turn on the radio and watch the voltage meter. It reads just over 25 milliamps, and when I turn on the small incandescent lamp included on the radio, the meter exceeds 50 milliamps. Now the incandescent lamp does not light very brightly, although it would if batteries were installed. Incandescent lamps use a lot more energy than LEDs, and so the meter is going to have a higher reading. For this radio, chances are when it's hooked up to a circuit and using the B4 battery for power, when you turn on the incandescent lamp, you won't be able to hear the radio because of the tremendous large amount of current that the lamp uses. The capacitor in this circuit helps to stabilize the battery voltage to maximize sound quality from the radio. If I was to remove it, chances are the sound would be a lot more distorted. So that's the purpose of the capacitor in this circuit. Besides adjusting the volume, you can also reset the radio or flip through stations using that single button. This radio is very basic, and like the clock I mentioned a few projects ago, it is really for demonstration purposes. For this circuit, 
we are going to set the voltage meter to the 5 volt setting and you will see that now reads just over 3 volts. The slide switch is currently in the C posi B position but we will move it to the C position and the yellow LED comes on. The current drops ever so slightly but there's not much of a difference otherwise. Now, the voltage would drop over time, but it, the voltage will drop incredibly slow, especially if the battery is, has just been charged. This project teaches that batteries can run devices for incredibly long periods of time, even though they'll eventually run out. Batteries, like this one, are hardly affected by changing weather. I'm not going to do it, obviously, but you can try putting the circuit in darkness change the temperature or vary the wind.